Hi, and welcome to the Bees Knees Podcast. This is your host, PJ Ewing. Good work. You found a very interesting interview with a very important person when it comes to knee surgery, knees, knee preparation, knee recovery. His name is Bill Paravano. You may know him as the knee pain guru. He's kind of famous out there on the interwebs, including a beautiful website, thekneepainguru.com, as well as a great YouTube uh, channel and frequent posts and videos that he puts up there. He's got a lot of things to offer a lot of people who may be experiencing knee pain, and we're going to get into that. Also, we're going to talk about his very, very interesting background and how he ended up (laughs) becoming the guru that he is today. However, I've got a disclaimer, and let's just dive right into it because I have to admit making a mistake, and that is, as you're listening to this interview, occasionally you're going to hear a little clickety-clack of somebody typing on a MacBook Pro, well, that someone is me, and it was me diligently taking notes and exploring things and trying to be a good interviewer along the way while Bill and I were going through our conversation, but uh, little did I know that you can hear my little clickety-clacks and... It might be slightly annoying on occasion. So forgive me, lesson learned. Darn it, won't happen again. Uh, That said, it's a great interview. I think you'll really enjoy it. So let's get to it. Bill Paravano, the knee pain guru, and me chatting about knees. Welcome to The Bee's Knees, a podcast full of articles, interviews, clinical studies, and advice about knee surgery, physical therapy, and life after knee surgery. All right. Well, this is PJ Ewing, and I am truly delighted that we have Bill Paravano with us today. This is uh, Bill. You're 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 a a little bit of royalty in the world of knees uh, to have on the show. I don't know if you've ever been called that. I know you're a guru, but I'm going to call you a king in some ways because you do such good work, and you do it in a very unique way. And your of course your background, you know. Is, is fascinating and how you ended up becoming the knee pain guru. And I am here for one reason only, and that is to get to know you and introduce you to, uh, I'm hoping, a broader audience for the good work that you do because it's fascinating. It's helping thousands of people. And I have a feeling that, you know, there's a, a bigger world that you can have maybe through things like this podcast and other, other opportunities. So, I guess what I wanted to do first is let you tell us about, you know, your background, your story, your mission, just the how you you came from where you were to where you are now, and in, in, in being such an important figure in the world of knee recovery. Uh, so uh, the floor is yours, Bill. Well, thank you, PJ, for that very kind introduction, and uh, for inviting me on the Bees Knees podcast. That been great. It's an honor to be able to share my information with you and and for your audience. So um, thank you for that. Uh, My background, uh, (laughs) it has less than glamorous beginnings. (laughs) I had no intention of going in this direction uh, back in 1998, 1999. Uh, I The journey essentially started when I had uh, dislocated my left knee a series of four times. Uh, Skiing, judo, volleyball, and softball. From December of 98 to May of 1999, this happened. And at that point, it was like, maybe I should go see a doctor (laughs) to see what's going on with my knee. walking or doing an activity and all of a sudden finding myself screaming on the ground wasn't what I had envisioned for my life. So ended up at the time I lived in Louisville, Kentucky, I went to the best orthopedic surgeon I could find. His name is Dr. John Ellis. He works for the University of Louisville sports team. So all of the basketball, football players for the Louisville Cardinals would go to see him and so I go to Dr. Ellis and I'm thinking he's going to tell me something good (laughs) and he did you know one of those tests you know where they kind of tug and twist your knee 
uh, to the left and to the right. And he put my leg back down on the, the examination table and he goes, you know, Bill, we could do an MRI, but it'd be a waste of money. You tore the ligament in your left knee or your ACL. And he, he probably could have, it, it was like he just gave me a, a sentence. I probably went white. I had this, you know, my sinking feeling in my stomach, uh, like the end of the world happened because my main love was judo. I loved martial arts. I loved throwing people. That was my deal. That's what I wanted to do. And I was really, really disheartened at that point, thinking, oh, my gosh, I never had to have a surgery, like a major surgery in my body at that point. And uh, took a moment to kind of digest what was going on. And I said, okay, well, when's the soonest we can schedule a, schedule surgery? So we scheduled it for a month later in June of 99. And uh, that, I remember waking up from the anesthesia. Um, it was not a pretty sight. Uh, the, the anesthesia made me sick. So I'm... <laughs> getting sick all over myself uh, my leg I couldn't bend it I couldn't raise it there was it was just a really really low point in my life um, I, I got story after story of how I couldn't get up off the toilet because my knee hurt so bad or I didn't have the leverage or balance with my knee the way it was. I got stuck in the bathtub trying to take the first shower after the surgery. I mean, it was just like that point in time in my life was not a pretty, it's, it's not good memories. And we, call remember, them, we call them humble beginnings. <laughs> oh, that, well, yeah, that was it. I had, I had a few of those. So after the surgery, I started physical therapy Dr. Ellis told me once it was my left knee and he said, as soon as your left knee is within 80% of the strength of the right knee, I'm going to give you the green light for normal activities. So that was like my goal. That was the finish line. I'm like PJ, 80%, that's all I need to get. And I had, they had one of those machines that could actually test it. So like quad strength. So I'm working my butt off. I'm going to physical therapy three times a week, religiously. Like I'm doing the exercises, what they tell me. I'm doing the stuff at home. And I get my leg with it, the left leg within 80% of the strength of the right. And I go for the last uh, appointment with Dr. Ellis before he's going to completely release me. And he goes, Okay, great. I'll get you set up with the Don Joy knee braces rep, and you'll get fitted for it, and you can go back to normal activities. And I was, you know, like the record scratch then. Like, what? what? You know, like, I have to wear a big titanium knee brace in order to do normal activities? And it was just not what I thought my life was going to look like after the surgery, after the doctors quote unquote fixed what was wrong with my knee. And that ultimately is when the journey like officially began. I was like, got it. This is the end of the line. This is the finish line for the conventional medical model. I need to find what is going to work for me because I, I just couldn't, accept the fact that this is how my body was going to feel. I still felt like I was compensating. I would get fatigued and tired. My legs would get exhausted by mid to late morning. I didn't sleep all that well. Um, it, the knee just didn't feel like it was mine. And that ultimately led to my, the path that I got on. It changed the, the, the injuries 
the surgery, the physical therapy, like, set me up for the different direction I was going to go in to begin studying and learning how to get my knee back to normal. Because I was 29 at the time, and I felt like I was in my 80s, exhausted, sweating, just going up the steps. <laughs> it's not a pretty sight. And I, I was like, well, there's got to be something better than this. This can't be it. So, um, How many great inventions, how many careers have been launched because of, you know, surprises, unhappy surprises like this one, right? And yeah. you realize there is a better solution, whether it's patient education or the way you treat or, you know, strengthen or avoid. I mean, there's so many factors involved in you, where you ended up, and now you you had to go through it firsthand to kind of launch yourself into into this path. Mm-hmm. Um, so what what did you do? There you are. You, you're, you're kind of your brain is turning its eye on opportunity, uh, pro, a, a better way to do things. What did you do uh, then? Well, I went before my knee injury. I was working out all the time running, biking, lifting weights, whatever was there to be done or I could do, I was exercising. Judo, like everything. I was constantly exercising. And I had spent a lot of time in doing physical activities. Well, when you're exhausted just getting around the kitchen in the morning, getting ready for work, and you don't have the energy to go exercise, that frees up a tremendous amount of time in a person's day to do stuff. So there I was, after all this energy I put into surgery, physical therapy, getting my knee back to normal, and I had just a tremendous amount of time. And I wasn't one that was kind of, would mindlessly numb myself in front of the television or kind of do what everyone else did. I started studying, going to classes. You know, they have weekend workshops. Here, try this thing out. Introduction to sound healing vibration. And like all these different workshops. And I started going to a number of these different workshops that they were hosting in the Louisville, Kentucky area. And I remember ending up in one of them. And it was called, I didn't even, I didn't know the teacher. I didn't even know the name of the modality. I actually had a friend that said, you know what? I think this would be a good fit for you. And at that point, my weekends were pretty free. So I showed up at the workshop, and the instructor has the opening circle, and she introduces the work. She goes, orthobionomy is an osteopathically based style of body work that was developed by a British osteopath who was also a judo instructor. And he took judo principles and applied it to an original osteopathic concept and developed an, ins- an entire style of body work. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Wow, how synchronous is it that I'm in this class that is all based on martial arts principles? Now, I didn't know squat about the body. I did. I was in a class with doctors and chiropractors and nurses and massage therapists. And here I was, at the time I owned a computer company. It's like, what am I doing here? And I even remember asking the instructor. I was like, are you sure it's okay? Like, you said scapula, and I didn't even know what bone that was. <laughs> you know? So there is this place of feeling pretty out of, um, like, the only one standing up in church. The questions that, that I was asking was nowhere near the questions that all of the other people that were that was their day job in the medical profession in the conventional approach of um, healing people and the instructor said yep you'll be fine don't worry about it just keep creating comfort 
that and that was the essence of the class is how can we position the body comfortably to engage the reflex so the body will let go of the tension and that first class was in October of 1999 and that started a tremendous journey for me that still continues to this day because the concepts and principles that I began learning in these orthobionomy workshops that I began traveling around the country and ended up traveling around the world to learn were essentially the cornerstone of the program that I developed. So that was the, a, a part of the approach. Mm -hmm. What, what did, when, when did you, uh, when did you start developing and then when was the program and air quotes here, when was that done? When, when were you starting with the program itself? How, how soon after that, 1999? Uh, 2008. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Well, That's a journey. I was, this was like ground zero, 99, 2000. I, I didn't even know what I wanted to do. Like I owned a computer company and I knew I didn't want to do that anymore. Like I wanted to leave that. I didn't like all of the headaches and hassles that went along with employees and inventory and loans and like all of that. It was just a nightmare for me. And the, the knee just made it worse because now I was dealing with the knee and dealing with all the stress and pressure and that just wasn't my, my scene. So uh, I think it was the beginning of 2000, I ended up selling the business to my partner and I went and traveled for two and a half years. And that's where I studied orthobionomy around the world. I, um, I was certified as a practitioner both in the United States and in Europe, and I became, became an instructor in the United States. Interesting. And uh, after I was done traveling, because traveling's cool, after a while, it gets kind of old, and I just wanted to settle down roots after traveling for two and a half years and begin perfecting my craft. So I'd been learning and working on people a little bit as I traveled. However, I wanted to put up my shingle and, and set up a massage table and begin working on clients to, to see if all of this stuff, how I could really begin to help people. So I did that at the end of 2002, beginning of 2003, and uh, that's, that was what I did. I saw clients, I would help them with hip pain, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, whatever, carpal tunnel, herniated discs, you name it. I would work on clients, they would get great results, but there was something about it that I wanted to make a bigger impact. Like there was something that didn't feel quite right about me working on people one-on-one -on -one and I couldn't put my finger on it. And I ended up coming across an internet business model back in 2007-ish, somewhere around there. And I was like, oh, well, that I like that. I like that where I could write a book and I could impact people around the world. So that was 2007, um, 2008, it, it, it had been percolating and then a friend of mine helped, helped me come up with the, the name, the knee pain guru. And I think it was June or July of 2008, I bought the domain and then put up my first website, or, well, the only website, pretty much, the new pain guru. And that's when I started selling my ebooks and beginning to work with clients remotely. Let me back up for a second, because I want to get into all that stuff as well. Orthobionomy, 
it's a certification, it's a body of knowledge. I, I'm wondering, is there a place for us to go and explore it further? I know there's a society of Orthobionomy International. Is that the place or are there, what do you recommend if we're curious about this practice? The Society of Orthobionomy International, that would okay. be the place. That, that's where I did a good portion of my training. It's ortho-bionomy.org. Right. Org. And um, that was uh, where I did my practitioner training, did 1,000 plus hours of practitioner training and equivalent, if not more amount of instructor training. I'll put a link in the notes for this episode uh, for, for the, the website. Uh, there are, I'm looking at it right now, there are some terrific videos just to you know, get familiar with the practice. Um, and obviously, if people want to pursue it further as a career path, it's, it's, uh, there's, a, there's a whole path. So they, they, but just to be clear, they do certification, this society? Yes. Is that right? That's okay. Correct. That's correct. Got it. Got it. And that's what you'd recommend. This is the place to go to uh, learn to more about it. orthobionomy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. There's a whole nother area of training that I was doing parallel with orthobionomy during that period of time. That we have yet to get into. Okay. Let's, let's get into that. Sure. So I have a huge background in martial arts. Started training in judo in 1990 and uh, at University of Toledo in Toledo, Ohio. And then that was going uh, up until pretty much I blew out my knee. And I took a sabbatical because... Well, I couldn't really walk. <laughs> and after I, the, the knee surgery and the physical therapy, I made attempts to get back into judo. I'm wearing this big titanium knee brace, and it is a very dangerous thing to hit somebody with if we're trying to throw each other. And all of a sudden, I hit somebody with this titanium knee brace. I could really injure somebody so that that wasn't that great for me but one of the practices that I was in I was we were doing practice throws and my partner uh, who I was doing these practice throws with did something where he tapped my hip and my knees buckled and I fell to the mat and I thought it was kind of like one of those fluke things. Like, okay, try that again. So I came into the throw again. He did something very similar to my hips. My knees buckled and I fell again. And I was like, okay, you got to show me what you did. And he goes, well, Bill, what I did, I simply relaxed your tension. And I was... Uh, there was something about it. If somebody shows me something that I can't wrap my head around, I need to plug it into what I already know. I need to like make sense of it in some way. Otherwise, I'm forever kind of mystified by it. And I ended up learning that what what this um, what this technique which is this relaxation that, that this, uh, my buddy did in my hips was it came from a, um, a Russian martial art called Sistema. And there is, this Sistema is what they taught the Russian special forces, the KGB and the spies in terms of uh, military application of martial arts. And there was a there was a gentleman in Toronto, Ontario. His name is Vladimir Vasiliev. That was teaching this style of martial arts. And there was something about it that completely hooked me because it was so different than judo. It didn't focus on technique. It didn't focus on ground fighting or standing. It focused on movement breathing and relaxation and building of the tendon ligament and fascial strength 
in the structure all based on principles so it was about 2000 that I was introduced to Sistema and I began studying Sistema studying the breath work studying studying the movement and what Sistema had to offer and was completely enthralled in that at the same time I was studying orthobiotic fascinating wow so uh, these are new concepts for me. I, I don't. I had never heard of Systema either. So I'm, I, I think right. that's probably pretty common, right? I mean, orthobionomy and then Systema are not, I mean, familiar to a lot of people. I'm guessing. And that's the piece that ultimately that's how the knee pain guru came about. I see. Because it's like we live in a in a, 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 a fast society. Like they want their solution now. And if you go to explain, like, the depth of orthobionomy, osteopathically based, I've already lost a person who's got knee pain. They don't care. They don't care about my training and all that. They want a result of their knee to ultimately get out of pain. And I can do it. I can help them either coming from the angle of an orthobionomy practitioner or I can come from the angle of teaching them uh, strengthening the tendons and ligaments in their joint and martial arts and systema and, uh, you know, <laughs> you could get down these rabbit holes of all these explanations of what you're doing to help them with pain, but ultimately people want the results. Ultimately, people want like show me, <laughs> like the Missouri, the Missouri State motto, the show me state. You got to show me in order to to get the results, and that's where the knee pain guru ultimately developed out of all that. Because I I had this tremendous, tremendous level of knowledge and experience coming from decades of martial arts training decades of orthobionic training and it was nothing that a doctor or a physical therapist or a chiropractor anybody that anyone was familiar with would know I have Complete, completely unique with, completely yeah, unique it was completely <laughs> unique and I was coming yeah. from an angle looking directly at the body through the lens of the nervous system, through where the source of the pain originates. And the source of all pain comes from nerve irritation. Bottom line, end of story, period, stop, full stop. Nerve irritation causes all pain for restriction and range of motion caused by nerve irritation, the nervous system tensing up to protect itself. And that's the conversation that needs to be had with anyone with knee pain. I don't care what the diagnosis is. I don't care how long they've been in pain. I don't care how much trauma their body has been through. It all goes down to a neurological signal that needs to be released in the physical body in order for the body's healing capabilities to come online. That's the conversation that we need to have. And when everyone is in the realm or in the conversation or in the room of strengthening the legs to increase the range of motion or given drug shot surgery in order to remove scar tissue or numb the pain or whatever the story is there, they're having the wrong conversation. So they're all kind of fumbling on, well, what is the thing causing the problem? It seems like you are uh, moving toward combining the orthobionomy and the systema into what I think you would determine or call a, a holistic approach that involves as much avoiding the need for a knee replacement or a knee surgery, preparing yourself, or if you've got these irritations, 
if the nervous system is protecting itself, doing what the body wants to do, how to deal with that without going to the path of surgery uh, or some of the procedures that are required. Would that be correct? Yes. So, so the, the background, the learning leads you to uh, a unique approach to knees, knee pain, managing knee pain, uh, solving it, avoiding it, and you begin your and, and also the interest in the the way of interacting with people, as you mentioned earlier. You said you know one on one may be terrific, but there's a a way to communicate with many remotely. It sounds like you were leading toward the more of an internet model, which I believe you have now today. Is that right? Correct. Tell us about that then. Well, what is, how, how does it work? How, how do you work with somebody, you know, with the tools that you've got available to you? Well, I've created a, a lot of videos over the past 11 years that are in a member's area of my website. And when I interact with a client, they're letting me know what's going on with their knee right now. And based on what they share with me right now, that's going to give me an indication of which videos I would have them go work with in my members area. And there's several hundred of several hundred videos in there, but someone who's in knee pain that's overwhelmed, that's already confused and frustrated the way it is, they don't want to have hundreds of videos to sort through. So interacting with me allows for me to see the situation objectively and say, got it, PJ, you just need to do modules 1, 2, and 40 based on what you're telling me is going on with your knee today, right now. So you do those, I refer to them as pain pattern interrupts. You do the pain pattern interrupts, and the next time we meet, You let me know what you notice. Did the pain move? Did the pain change? Did you notice anything? Did the pain get worse? All of that is valuable feedback for me to understand what you are noticing or not noticing and what we need to do to course correct to get you back, your body back on track so we relieve the pain and it can heal itself in the shortest period of time. Pain pattern interrupt. All right. Are there examples outside of the members area that I might be able to share with uh, those listening? Yes, I'll get you one. If you Give me one. Mind yeah. After. Sure. Um, but, but for. I want to share that. I want people to see what you're doing there. That, that's so interesting. Yeah. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a library of video that you can curate for a specific individual, modules one through eight or whatever, however you term that, and, you know, guide them uniquely through the series of videos that are right for them at that moment. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. And essentially what it's doing is it's teaching people to do orthobionomy for themselves. <laughs> right. Yeah. And what I did, what I learned, like, I got into going to these classes because I wanted my knee to get better. I really didn't have like this intention of learning to be a practitioner so I could work on someone else. It was like, oh, hey, hey, wait a minute. (laughs) You know, I want my own knee worked on. So there was a little bit of a disconnect for me through my train. Although I enjoyed it, I enjoyed the learning, when I finally got into the to the knee pain guru, uh, you know, in 2008, and I developed all of that, I was like, well, people want to learn to do this for themselves, so they don't need to be in pain. Well, it's funny so that your, your friend helped you with the name along the way, and it's so appropriate. Uh, the, your friend was right on, right? Because you're a Pied Piper, a guru, a leader, but you're a teacher. And you're, you're empowering people to, so, to heal themselves uh, with group bodies of knowledge that you've as, assembled over this time. And I'm sure that people can go back over that curriculum that you've established for them through those videos that you've selected, you know, again and again. And, you know, go, go back to the beginning and, you know, and continue to work on that issue and solve that problem because you're, you're giving them the, the building blocks. One-on-one. 
takes place on the phone if they're in the U.S. or Skype if it's international because I work with clients around the world. And it's calling them or communicating with them at a, at a scheduled time, mutually convenient scheduled time, where they tell me what's going on. I give them the homework. They go through what they need to go through, questions they need to ask, questions I need to ask to better understand if they're understanding it or not. And then they continue working with that. So that, that's the one-on-one -on -one format. The group coaching takes place, which is, I refer to it as me club. Group coaching takes place in a private Facebook group. So our interaction, our interface is in this private Facebook group called me club. And we meet twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. And clients at any point in time can type in questions or leave feedback as to what's going on with their knee in a Facebook feed, in the Facebook feed. I read those at those scheduled times on Mondays and Thursdays, and I reply to the questions with the date of the video that I responded. So then the clients, if they're busy on vacation, don't have time, they can look back a week or so later and know exactly which video to look at, the date of the video to look at, to hear my answer as to the homework that they would need to do. Or more specific feedback in order to know how, to, how they need to customize the program based on what their, what their challenge they're running into. Um, and if clients can show up at those times on Mondays and Thursdays, I answer them in a live feed. I'll answer them right there on the call. And calls are recorded, so they're continually up there. And they can refer to that any, at any point in time. Are your clients, patients, your group, are they involved for months, years? Is it a, a, a course that they go through and then they're gone, or are they... Uh, how, how, what kind of time frame are we talking about for most people? Most people is probably three to four months ballpark. Mm -hmm. But everybody has a different uh, everybody has a different path. Let's put it that way. Some people just want to get out of pain. Like once they get out of pain, they still may have stiffness. They and I would say those people ha have different goals or their goals are set at a different level than other people that are more into the really understanding and exploring the potential of what their body is capable of. So some people, I, I had one woman, uh, th this was, her name was Lynn. She had a baker cyst. She'd been suffering for, I want to say eight months with this Baker cyst. She'd try to have it drained. They were going to talk about surgery to remove it. And she wanted to get into the program to get relief. I started, started her out in three weeks. <laughs> three weeks, the Baker cyst was resolved. Wow. You know, and it's like when we align ourselves with our body's ability to heal itself, it and get out of the way. That's the big thing. We got to get out of the way once we set it up and line everything up. Then we got to get out of the way. And that's what she did. And this Baker cyst that she'd been suffering with for months resolved itself in a matter of weeks. Amazing. No, that's fantastic. no needles, no surgery, anything like that. Um, and then I have other people that whatever space they're in and, and what's important to bring to the table is the psychological component chronic pain has on people. Chronic pain absolutely wears down people's resolve. It um, erodes at their will to live. It, it, it has a huge effect on feeling, uh, de feelings of depression and their self-worth how they stand in the world as a man or a woman. I like knee pain, especially. 
it has this huge effect. And a lot of times we can resolve the physical pain, but there, the other ripples that the pain has in a person's life still exist. So there's many people that choose to continue in knee club after their pain has gone away because we could work on other things. Understanding I, the body on many different levels. I saw this yesterday, Bill, as I was kind of getting ready for you, wanting to be as smart as I could as an interviewer. And there was a piece that you were doing, I think it was a 45-minute YouTube video about this topic about the psychological effects, about depression. And uh, it, was, it was right on. I, I know personally from a lot of work with me people on my end that, that yeah, there's, there's, you know, there, there's a pulling away from your friends and not being able to do the activities you want to do. And there's a whole impact on the brain. And you were tackling that there as well. And now that, but that was outside of your private Facebook group. So what, how is it different on YouTube versus what you're doing in your private, your private group? Well, what's on YouTube is more of a level of educating people that resolving knee pain, relieving knee pain, is more than just exercises and stretches, strengthening the legs. And that's where I see the level of people out there searching for answers are searching for on a very elementary level, like on a basic level. And they're not understanding the broader scope of the impact of what this knee has in their life. So my YouTube channel is more about educating people, helping people, uh, qualifying people, for how I can help them. Many people on the internet are trying to circumvent going to a doctor by finding some expert on the internet to give them the solution for essentially give them a diagnosis. And part of my YouTube channel is to begin to educate them. It's like, okay, something happened to your knee. What is your doctor's diagnosis? And if you haven't got a doctor's diagnosis, then go to a doctor, a good doctor, to find out if something is broken or torn. Don't be like Bill and dislocate your left knee four times before going to a doctor. We have <laughs> to turn on the lights in the living room before we can straighten it up. And in order to develop a clear strategy to move forward, in knee club or private coaching or anything else, any other approach you are for healing what's going on in your knee, you have to know what you're dealing with. And that is what the YouTube channel is. Well, let's talk about this entirety of what's going on and like really looking at, is physical therapy working for you? If, you're, if you've been going to physical therapy for months and some people have been going to it for years and it's putting you in pain for days and weeks afterwards and you've gotten maybe another 5 or 10% range of motion in your knee, a rational person is going to go, oh, this really isn't, there's got to be something else out there. Physical therapy isn't working for me. But this is how pain will change the mind that will keep holding on to this carrot that we think, well, if I push a little bit more, well, if I try a little bit harder, well, if I do, uh, if I just suck it up and push through the pain, that maybe it'll change one day. And it's honestly, it's a definition of insanity. Or yeah. drugs, shots. And a lot of people don't want to do the drugs or shots anymore, so they'll suck it up and deal with the pain, not even considering that there's other options out there. Or they do manipulation under anesthesia, not even questioning why is their body building the scar tissue or stopping the range of motion to begin with. Like Let me ask you about that. 
there's conversations that need to be had before. Like, the, the, the medical model is starting the conversation at, at like, C, you know, A, B, C, and we need to have conversations at A and B. Right. In order to get any leverage and movement people forward. So my YouTube channel is there to begin to educate people to see the broader scope of the conversations that need to be had. Let me ask you about MUA, manipulation under anesthesia. Um, what Do you have a, a, a general broad opinion of that procedure? Uh, that's my first question. And then I'm curious about, you know, abilities to avoid or recover afterwards if you're, you're finding yourself helping people in those situations. I think it can be sometimes a solution. I'm not – nothing that the medical model does I'm completely against. I think – there is a place, there is a time for every procedure that the medical model has. Once again, it goes back to that. They're having the conversation at C, and they're not, they're looking at the manipulation under anesthesia, the, um, the uh, knee replacement surgery, the surgery in general. Uh, the drug, the shot, the physical therapy as being the, that's, that's what to do. And they're not looking at the person as a whole. Gotcha. So the, you're, I, I, I'm hearing um, that you would be a, maybe an important stop along the way with the education, the, the tools that you provide, the articles you write, the books that you write, the YouTube work, the, signing up and becoming part of the knee club is a stop along the way, potentially to um, avoid some of these procedures, avoid the need for a knee replacement, for instance, but uh, the, uh, the idea that you could potentially intercept a patient and help them not have to go through some of the things that the medical system's kind of at the ready to deliver. Because I hear it every day. Oh, you know, it's, uh, I'm bone on bone in quotes, and, you know, my meniscus is gone, and, you know, the doctor is giving me, you know, a timeline, and I need to have a replacement soon enough. In six to 12 months, I'm definitely going to have it done. Is that a person that you really would like to speak with? Sure, absolutely. And here's how the conversation changes when you start asking that person questions. The person hears the bone on bone, and they're like, oh, the doctor game over. Me and yeah, right. it's like game they, over. Oh, darn it. <laughs> they've, yeah. they've, they've put up their white flag, and they're waving it. And they're going, oh, there's nothing I can do. Poor me. That's it. End of story. And what, I'm, what I ask people with bone on bone, and this goes beyond the belief of anything that I can do, because the belief of what I can do or what I offer, what my program can help them with, is way beyond their comprehension at this point. They're already resigned to the knee replacement surgery. It's just a matter of time. What I ask them is, if you didn't have pain in your knee and you didn't have restriction in range of motion, would you go to the doctor? That's the conversation. That's the question to have is do you have pain in your knee? Do you have restriction in range of motion? And if you don't have pain in your knee, and you don't have restriction and range of motion, what are you talking to a doctor for? <laughs> like, that's a hypochondria. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, totally. And, and, yeah. And, you know, I'll just tell you, I've, I've met and worked with and helped people recover in the knee world who had a knee replacement. And, and you know, kind of the private conversation is, well, you know, my, my knee's kind of fine. I, I, my, I had my other one done, and that one was a problem. But the doctor said that I'm going to need the, 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 the left because I already did the right. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it preemptively 
um, just because, you know, it seems like it's going to go soon enough, so I, I'm just going to go have the knee replaced. And, you know, it, that's the kind of person that you might want to have a deep conversation with <laughs> who really doesn't need it, but has sort of been convinced that it's the right answer for them. Yeah. And, and that's a lot of it. It's like why I send them to my YouTube channel because I've had so many of these conversations over the past 11 years since I started this online I have so many different people who get stuck in this, um, mindset of, well, we'll just replace it. The doctor, this is what the doctor told me to do. And this is not to say that the doctors don't play a valuable role. If I get into a car accident and I have my, something awful happens and I need the Western medical model to put me back together, absolutely. Something's broken or torn. I want them in my corner. But beyond that, everything is quote unquote mechanically sound I have no reason to talk to a doctor because they just aren't at my level they just don't know what I know and I've gone back and forth with osteopaths and orthopedic surgeons on my YouTube channel and they tell me you have no experience and you have no this and you have no that and it's like we're, we're essentially having different conversations because they don't look at the body from a neurological perspective they look at it from a mechanical perspective an anatomy perspective yeah which is yeah. very important structure governs function so if the structure is not in place the function is not going to happen and what all of the healing components of when the neurology goes into a parasympathetic or rested and relaxed state goes online when we get the body comfortable. And if the body is in physical pain, all of those functions slow down. If it's in a sympathetic state or a fight or flight state, it slows down. And this is something the doctors have no understanding of, no education of, let alone the importance of water or nutrition or stuff like that. That's evidenced by the food that they serve in hospitals. Half of yeah. the food that they give patients in hospitals are actually contributing to the diabetes that people are struggling with. And not do you more. do you get into diet much, Bill, with your work? A little bit, a little bit. It, hmm. I'm not the diet expert. I have some basics and fundamentals. If I can't get a person out of pain with the pain pattern interrupts, with um, you know, basic things of life changing stuff. I, I have some core fundamental things that I work with. Then what I'll do is I'll, I'll tweak around with diet a little bit to see, well, maybe if cutting out sugar makes a difference. Maybe if incorporating something to reduce inflammation in the body mm. or begin to tweak and adjust it. But people who are in pain the knee pain don't necessarily come to me to get their diet changed. Um, mm -hmm. Diet gets, it, it's, it's funny, there's a lot of emotional stuff that's around diet. It ties in with um, emotions, it ties, it ties in with nationality and religion and family and culture, and, and it's a tricky subject. So if I can get people out of pain with doing the pain pattern interrupts and helping them just have some basic things that they can do on a daily basis to relieve the pain in their knees and how far they want to take it, they want to go down that path with diet, I could certainly help them. And if, if not, then I can pass them along to some friends who have some real in-depth knowledge in that area. Interesting. Um, let's go through, because I, I, you and I discussed this for a second, and, and I'd like to follow up with more in the future where we can dive into some specific topics in, in a little bit more, you know, in a concentrated fashion. This is sort of the get to know you and what you do episode. Um, uh, and I, I, we've listed the YouTube channel. Uh, I think if you just look up the Knee Pain Guru you'll get to where you need to be, whether it's YouTube or on the web, get to your website. 
Um, you do have some wonderful articles on your own website, which are worth browsing through. Um, and there's also the books that you've published. And I don't know if you feel you want to direct people specifically to one or more of them, but those are available on Amazon, I believe. I think all of them are, aren't they? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, so those are there are various ways to get to you. Uh, but there's an event that I think you wanted to reference as well coming up in your hometown or nearby, I guess. And maybe you can tell us about that, too, while we're here. Yes. I'm uh, hosting a, a workshop. It's a day-long workshop in Asheville, North Carolina, or in the Asheville, North Carolina area. It's at Mars Hill University, and it's, we're basically going to dig in. For those that show up, we're going to get it's going to be a small group i'm limiting it to 10 people we're going to it's going to be like one-on-one -on -one. hey pj what's going on with your knees what's happening and it's an opportunity for me to give you hands-on tools that are going to relieve the pain in your knee walk you through all the the distinctions and nuances that need to be brought to your attention it's an opportunity for me to watch how you sit, how you stand, how you walk. And that in-person feedback is incredibly valuable to both of us to understand what's going to be the highest leverage thing for you to work with. Um, and the cool part about that is I'm able to weave in the questions that one person asks with what another person is dealing with and that comes up and that exemplifies the point <laughs> that I'd like to make and it, it weaves together in this really interesting way of insights and light bulbs and, and shifting of tension in the physical body and uh, letting things unfold and working you know, throughout an eight hour day, it allows me to see how you felt in the morning, how you felt through the morning into the afternoon, what happened after you got back from lunch, how did that shift and change and questions begin to develop that uh, students didn't know to ask when they first showed up in the morning. They didn't have a reference point. Now they begin to see and understand how it begins to tie together in the bigger picture of what we're talking about to get these tension patterns released from the physical body or how their sitting is playing into the pain in their knees or how their walking is contributing to what's going on in their hips and lower back. Um, it, so it, for me, it's a lot of fun because I really get to bring all of my skill set, the 21 years online, in a room with a, a dedicated, motivated group of people that really want to relieve what's going on in their body. Fun. Super fun. I bet those are great events. How do we, how do we, if you're in the Asheville or uh, area or within a couple hour drive, how do we find out about signing up for that event? If you go to the knee pain guru website, there is a products, products and programs link. Oh, right. Okay. And the uh, one on the right, there's three of them. That yeah. Are right, there. The one right. On the right is the, the live event. And, it also includes the middle one, which is Knee Club. So if they go I to see. the live event, they automatically get Knee Club. And that's the private Facebook group. We meet twice a week, access to all the videos, uh, and you know that ongoing support before and after the class. So as soon as you sign up for the class, you're in Knee Club. We're working Mondays and Thursdays up until the class. We work that day in the class and then that continues on after uh, after the class as well that's terrific uh, so that's great so there's a, a full full event and I, I'm sorry did you say the date what, what is the date of that event September 28 28 Saturday. okay coming up so um, I will post this this uh, episode ASAP so those that are listening can uh, make sure they sign up if there are any slots left um, Okay, well, um, shoot, Bill, this has been really great. Is there, is there anything that we have not covered? I want to make sure people can get to you. So I think the YouTube channel is a great way to get
get to know you. Obviously, what you're doing on the website itself, um, those are probably the two places to start, I would guess. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, those YouTube channel and my website are great places to start. Okay. You can also reach out on Facebook. I have a, a Knee Pain Guru Facebook page. Okay, great. Okay. Is there an email that you use that you'd want to share? Yeah, uh, probably bill at the kneepainguru.com would be the best way to reach me. That's right. Uh, there, there are two other things that um, I was going to mention. One is the September special, like the one-on-one coaching deal. The It's uh, for the rest of the month. It would be one-on-one coaching that's significantly discounted off of the um, my normal private coaching price, and it's just for the month of September. It allows people to get an opportunity to work with me one-on-one, and then at the end of that month, if they would like to either continue the private coaching or join the knee club, they're welcome to do so as well. All they need to do is send me an email, a bill with the knee pain guru, and say, hey, I'd like the, the link to sign up for the September private coaching special. And then I also have the practitioner training program that I'm developing. Where right. I have a core group of people that is developing that practitioner training program to essentially teach people to do what I do so they can uh, understand at the level, who knows, I don't know, maybe they'll go beyond me in understanding the body um, in a way or looking through the lens of the body, the nervous system, the way that I do. Great, yeah, that's right, I'm glad you mentioned that. So lots of ways for those that want to, you know, learn about the practice or just get help um, and there are ways to do that for free. There are ways to do that with signing up for your program or going to the actual event in Asheville. Um, lots of ways to engage and learn about what you do. That's great. I, I, I would like to, as I've mentioned, do this again, Bill, but we'll, we'll do a little bit less of the survey work that we did today and get into some specific subject matter uh, that, you know, maybe a little mini curriculum of things that we could do over the next number of months. Uh, because I, I know that it's fascinating to me. It's a really unique, completely different approach to solving knee problems, and I think a lot of people would be very interested in a potentially potentially non-surgical answer to their knee pain, and you may very well have those answers for them if they, if they mm-hmm. dive in. Well, great, PJ. I really appreciate you inviting me on and allowing me to share. To learn more, visit x10therapy.com, 1-855-910-5633. Just a reminder, it's a huge help if you subscribe to, rate, and review our podcast. It helps people find us.